In this video, I will teach you the techniques you need to solve a 5x5 blindfolded. The first thing everyone asks is, how many 3 blinds is a 5 blind equivalent to? Well, a 3 blind is around 10 letter pairs, or 20 targets. A 4 blind is around 25 letter pairs, or 50 targets. And a 5 blind is around 40 letter pairs, or 80 targets. Now 40 letter pairs is a lot, so how can you possibly remember all those letters? What most people do is use a memory technique called Roman Rooms. If you do not know how to apply Roman Rooms to your solves yet, check out my tutorial in the description. Before you can learn to solve a 5x5 blindfolded, you should probably know how to solve a 4x4 blindfolded. If you don't know how to do that, check out JPerm's tutorial in the description. A 5x5 has 5 different piece types. Corners, midges, wings, x-centers, and plus centers. A 4x4 only has corners, wings, and x-centers, so the only new pieces are midges and plus centers. Midges are these pieces on a 5x5, which are analogous to edges on a 3x3. We can solve midges with M2, similarly to the way we use M2 on 3 blind. For example, if we have J, H, we can do setup move, M2, undo setup move. Now for H, some of you may do the setup with wide moves, but that doesn't work on midges because it messes up the centers. Instead, we have to rotate and do the standard alg. Midge parity is the same as edge parity on a 3x3. If we had parity, we would do the last target, and then the parity alg. Now it's important to note that corner and midge parity are linked like on 3 blind. So if you have parity for corners, you will also have parity for midges. And if you don't have parity on one, you won't have parity on the other. Let's take a look at this scramble. For midges, we need to shoot to L. And for corners, this is our buffer, so we need to go to P. Here's how we're going to handle parity. First, we're going to solve midges. Next, we're going to do the midge parity alg. Then we're going to solve corners. And finally, we need to fix wings. On 4 blind, after you solve corners, you would fix wings with this adjacent PLL parity alg. However, on a 5x5, five five, that alg doesn't work because it messes up the centers. So instead, we have to use this alg, u2, r u r prime u prime, wide r2, f2, u2, r2, u2, f2, wide r2, u, r, u prime, r prime, u2. To summarize, here's how we handle midge corner parity. Solve midges, do the midge parity alg, solve corners, and then fix wings with the center safe alg. This method of handling parity only works if you execute midges before corners. If you're wondering what order to memorize and execute, I will go over that later in this video. We can solve wings with R2 in the exact same way as on 4 blind, so you don't want to learn anything new. For example, if we need to solve L and then M, we can do this and then that. On a 5x5, five five, it's the exact same. L, M. X centers are the same as centers on 4 blind. If you're wondering why they're called X centers, it's because they make an X shape. Plus centers are centers that form a plus shape. A 4x4 four four only has X centers. Before I move on to plus centers, I need to talk about notation. A lowercase letter means to only move the inner slice. So M is this, and M prime is that. The other thing is that E follows D. D goes this way, and E also goes that way. D prime goes this way, and E prime goes that way. Now for plus centers. The first thing we need is a lettering scheme, and we can use the exact same scheme as for edges. In spefs, that would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X. We can solve plus centers with the U2 method, and the concept is the exact same as U2 for X centers. We have our buffer, D, and our target sticker, B. The idea is to set up centers to our target sticker, do a U2, then undo the setup. Just like X centers, we have top centers, side centers, and bottom centers. First, let's take a look at side centers. If we want to shoot to this center, L, we can do an R, which puts our target sticker over here, E2, R prime, which inserts our sticker here, do a U2, and then undo the setup. 
Sometimes we have to rotate, like if we have Q, we can do a Y prime. And M puts us in position to insert the center, can do a U2, then undo the setup and rotate back. There are some trickier targets, like G. If we try to move the target center first, G gets moved as well. So what we have to do is move it out of the way first, then we can insert it into the target spot, do a U2, and then undo the setup. I will put a full list of the setup moves in the description. Now for the top centers. If we want to swap with B, that's just a U2. If we want to swap with A, we will do an M, and then a swap for I, and then a U2, M prime, U2. It doesn't look like it did anything, but it actually cycled these white centers. See, if I do the alg on this cube that's labeled, You can see that it actually cycled these stickers. C is similar to A, and I will put the alg in the description. Now you have to be careful, because every time A or C comes second in the letter pair, you have to do the other one instead. So if C came second, you would do A instead. Finally, let's do the bottom centers. Notice that this alg, Y prime, M, U2, M prime, inserts V into here without disturbing the U layer. We can then do a U2, and then undo the setup. This swaps the buffer with V. For all the bottom centers, we will just set up to V. So if we wanted to solve X, we can do a D2, which puts it into V's spot, and then do the alg for V, and then undo the D2. Let's take a look at an example. Do this scramble. M prime, U2, M, U2. So first we start by looking at our buffer. This white center needs to go to C, which needs to go to U. And now since all the white centers are solved, we need to break into a new cycle. I'll shoot to I, which goes to Q, and then back to I. Okay, so our first target is C. C comes first in letter pair, so we can just do C. If it was second, we would have to do A instead. Our algorithm for C is this. Next is U, so we will set up to V. For I, we will rotate, insert it, do a U2, then undo the insertion. Now, my next, my next letter is Q, and I know that I'm going to have to rotate for Q, so I'm not going to rotate back. I'm just going to stay here and insert it, do a U2, and undo the insertion. Next is I, which we already know how to solve. Finally, since we had an odd number of targets, we have parity, and the parity algorithm is just U2. Again, all the setup moves and algorithms for U2 are in the description, so be sure to check that out. I recommend memoing in this order. Corners, wings, midges, plus centers, X centers. And executing in the reverse order. X centers, plus centers, midges, wings, and corners. There are several reasons for this order. The reason we execute centers first is because some outs are not center safe. For example, old Poffman corners doesn't look like it affects the centers but it's actually shifting the position of solved centers. For example, if centers weren't solved and we did corners, it shifted the position of the screen center. Notice that we also execute midges before corners. Like I said earlier, we have to execute in this order, otherwise the parity method won't work. This memorization and execution order also allows you to do more advanced techniques, like the UBUL swap. Finally, the reason I execute in reverse order I memoed is because I can put centers in short-term memory and then execute them right away. If you don't want to execute in reverse order, that's okay. You can memo X centers, plus centers, midges, wings, corners, and then execute in the same order. So to summarize, we solve X centers and plus centers with U2, midges with M2, wings with R2, and corners with old Pockman. I recommend that you memorize corners, wings, midges, plus centers, and then X centers and execute X centers, plus centers, midges, wings, and corners. I also typed out a full five line example saw with some notes. The link is in the description, so if you're having trouble with five line, make sure you check that out. Other than that, that's it for five line. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I will be sure to read them. Thanks for watching.